Well, good evening. Uh, I'm Rick Dancer. This is Get Real with Rick Dancer. And to my right, your left, is Lane County Commissioner Pat Farr. Pat, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure, Rick. So Pat and I have been talking about reopening Oregon and some of the things we're, that po people are talking about. And we thought it would be good to just, um, tomorrow there's a meeting uh, at the Lane County Commissioners and there's an online way that you can go on and comment at this public hearing. And they're going to be talking about a letter sending to uh, Governor Kate Brown asking for some flexibility here in Lane County. And so I just there's so many people talking about this that I just thought it would be really good to have Pat here. Um, and we can't have too many commissioners or then we have a meeting. And so we, <laughs> we, we don't have the whole board because then we'd have a meeting. So Pat and I know each other from a long time ago. And um, I said, can you come on and explain to people what what kind of power do we have locally? Um, if any, and what can we ask for? So Pat, why don't you just take it away and correct anything that I may have said wrong? <laughs> You're right on so far, Rick, thank you. Okay. Are you aware of a hearing tomorrow, Sarah Evans said. Yes, Pat and I are aware there is a hearing tomorrow. <laughs> so what do you guys, what kind of power does the local board of commissioners have in terms of talking about reopening Oregon um, and re reopening specifically Lane County? You know, the, the main thing we can do right now is we can petition the governor to allow us to relax some of the restriction, restrictions locally. The order that was signed on Friday, which is 20-20, uh, uh, whatever it was on Friday, extends the uh, emergency period to July 7th. It added a 60-day extension from uh, the original emergency period was uh, set to expire May 7th. Uh, it just continues what was passed in 20-02 on, uh, on March 8th. And uh, really, it gives the governor all of the authority uh, to do uh, anything that the governor chooses to do or, or through the health, uh, the Oregon Health Association, or excuse me, um, OHA. Um, so what we have to do is ask for a relaxation locally. Now, the reason I'm in favor of that and the reason we'll have this discussion tomorrow pretty robustly is because counties are different. A one one size fits all really doesn't work for Multnomah County and Brant County, for instance. Very different situations, very different uh, um, uh, presence of the of the virus, and you know, just a, a largely different situation completely. You know, well, even County here, very, even Lane County versus Washington County, we're completely different animals, and yeah. and if you take the whole state and lump them into one thing. Uh, one place, it, it doesn't really reflect what's going on here. And I think that's where people, especially some in the business community, are having problems going, now, wait wait a second, we're we're not Portland. Um, we're not Salem or Medford or what, you know, we, we, we want local, some local control over the decisions being made here. Exactly. And, you know, the, uh, and really that's all we're asking for. We're not saying, we're not specifically saying what it is we're going to do, but we're asking for the authority to uh, to make the relaxation locally. And the way the letter is written so far, um, we uh, we acknowledge that there's that there's a situation in Oregon, and uh, said that I'll read very specifically. People can actually view this online. While we value the benefit of having statewide strategy in terms of providing clarity for employers and the public, and in preventing confusion that could result from disparate rules or expectations, we also make believe there may be some instances where a local government should have the flexibility to review specific situations on a case by case basis and grant exceptions. And that is, so, that's what we're asking for. So like, what would that look like? I mean, I, I don't want to make it specific so that you're trapped and please anybody out yeah. there, if we can't have a discussion and just let Pat kind of talk, um, we're going to be in trouble. Um, yeah. But but would that be like, is this like, well, maybe some hairdressers or people that with, within, if we develop some of our own rules, because I think what one of my concerns and a lot of people's concerns in the business community is we have this hundred thousand tests we're looking at doing, but that could take five to six weeks. And I think a lot of business people are going, I don't think I can last five or six weeks when I don't get unemployment. My PPP is still there, not yeah. there. And, and I don't have a stimulus check yet. So there's people out there who are really hurting, you know, financially as well. So how do we bridge these two gaps between making sure people are safe that, are out there, but also making sure that businesses are safe. Absolutely. You know, Colleen states that we need us to have a soft opening, whether it's a state or a local, and I agree with that. We can't just uh, uh, across the board open everything up. 
uh, because of the potential that has been outlined by some doctors and some scientists that the potential of a second wave that could be triggered by uh, greater uh, exposure to of people to people. So the important step would be to also have a uh, reverse strategy, you know, by allowing certain activities to occur, then keeping a close eye on it. And if, um, if as some people predicted, predicted, there may be a second wave starting from that activity, that we just have a way out of it, uh, that we wouldn't have to think um, on the fly as to how do we, uh, how do we get out of it? So for Pat, instance, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. You mentioned uh, hair salons where it's very easy for, for a, a, a owner of a hair salon to have one customer at a time and clean up ex, um, extensively, a deep cleaning after each customer um, and check, check temperatures, whatever it may be, wear masks, whatever it may be. And then, um, so that's a relatively easy step to take. Going further and allowing um, more retail stores to open, for instance, uh, allowing restaurants to open for, for seating uh, would be a little bit more, a little bit deeper of a step. So keeping an eye on what happens and being able to step back should, should we need to. So, um, and I'm not, you can just tell me the truth. I'm just saying how, 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 how practical or how, um, God, what is the word I'm trying to think of here? This has to be all the all five commissioners, right? How likely is this to happen? This that this letter is going to be approved and actually go to the governor? Do you think? Well, it needs to be a majority of commissioners, uh, three of the five. Um, you know, five is always fantastic because then we get the uh, the full weight of the entire board in any request we make to the governor. A split decision is not always the best uh, presentation. Um, so, how likely is it? In the, the fact that we're talking about it, in the fact that there is such a great deal of input. And I, I say that kind of with a smile on my face. There's a great deal of input that we're receiving right now. Um, I think it'll be a, a heartfelt, robust discussion uh, that stands a very good chance of moving forward. So I don't know if this is Pat's and my expertise here, but Jennifer's saying, I have a question. People are saying the executive order was extended, but the stay at home order expired on the 28th. Is that true? Uh, the, um, the executive order, I, I, you know, I can't speak specifically to that. Um, the, uh, I can look up this. I have the stay at home order right here. Bear with me a second. Yeah, I can't either. That's not my expertise on that either. I'm sure someone will come on here later and answer. Does the Lane County, does, doesn't the Lane County plan state that the county is deferring to Governor Brown with sectors reopening? That's not keeping those decisions local. Uh, now, wh which one? Sir? Okay, that Nicole says, one? Nicole wants to know, she doesn't the Lane County plan state that the county is deferring to Governor Brown with sectors reopening? Uh, the uh, as it stands right now, yes, we don't really have the authorization to open sectors, um, and that's what we're asking for is that authorization. Okay. So uh, once uh, once we get into uh, the extension, then we would uh, we would be able to specifically outline our plan to open different sectors, and it would be. Uh, and I'm watching the 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 questions as they come through, Rick. It would be um, up to us to present a plan that would be accepted, and then we would move over that plan, which includes a, a reverse strategy. So if you send this letter to the to the governor and she says, OK, well, I'll let you have more flexibility, then we create a plan here in Lane County and send that in and see if that can get approval. Essentially, yes, that's what it is. OK, does. I'm, we're doing this really basic. You guys, here's the other point, Pat and I, um, Commissioner Farr, and I really want you guys to understand. So it's it's really important tomorrow that um, I'm going to put a a a, 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 a a link. It's on the website, on the Lane County government website, that you can go on tomorrow and go to the public hearing via, you know, this sort of technology and yes. make your wishes known. You can sit and gripe and talk and scream and yell and talk on Facebook all you want. That's not going to do any good. You need to get on so that they have the people on their saying, whether whatever whatever position you take, they need to hear what you think because they can't go in and say, well, uh, I think uh, maybe people really want to do this or some people want to do that. You are the people. So you have to Precisely. act like that. And this is a chance for Pat and everyone to hear that. And you'll I'm get sorry, I got on my soapbox. I'll climb off for a minute. It's a good soapbox, right? It, because we... Uh, we often get just a single point of view in our public forums. Uh, this will be an opportunity for people who maybe otherwise wouldn't have a chance to go down to Harris Hall and sign up. You can sit at, sit where, at your office, in your home, wherever you may be, and sign up for the public forum tomorrow. And uh, typically you get three minutes, um, and uh, uh, people take turns and have three minutes to say, say their mind.
So um, this is City Councilor, Eugene City Councilor Mike Clark is saying, as the county is the health authority extension of the state and the governor has already outlined the five point plan, would it work to ask her to defer each of those five points in a data driven measured way to be monitored and managed by the county? You know, Mike, that is essentially what we would be doing. We'd be looking okay. at the different different possibilities, and as closely as we can match it with what has been stated by the state, you know, uh, in language that they understand. I, my my feeling is that we have a greater level of success. So, Mike, that's a good question. Um, Nicole, <clears throat> she already submitted comments. So that's another thing you can do is go online right now. If you can't make that meeting at nine o'clock, go online right now, like Nicole did. And she's super involved in this issue and she's writing a letter. And I know Nicole is being kind because kind letters get you a lot further than ones that are screaming letters. <laughs> you know, I, people to read, <laughs> <laughs> but I know, can, we have to, some people need to scream though, right? You know that um, we all scream when we have to scream and sometimes that is the best way to get attention. I don't mind hearing screaming as long as people are reasonable, not reasonable, but uh, coherent about what it is that they're saying. You know, right. we're pretty emotional about this. Um, and uh, what is happening around the county right now is we have people who haven't worked for five or six or more weeks and haven't <clears> had a paycheck for five or six or more weeks. And we have to be able to look at whatever way we can to safely return people to their closer to their normal way of life. So uh, scream if you need to. Right, <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but I think that's what we don't quite, some of us don't quite understand is we all have a different perspective. And and when you have money coming in, then it's, you know, then it, it's ha you have a position. If you don't have money coming in, it, it's a lot harder to do this. So Sven says, how is testing going to be ramped up in Lane County? Do we have anything from the health department? Uh, we are we're getting a, a larger supply of the uh, reagents necessary for, to perform the testing. We can take as many samples as as we want. It's the reagents to actually perform the test, and we're getting more of a supply all the time, and different kinds of tests. Some are less less uh, accurate than others, but I would foresee in the next couple of weeks we'll have a pretty robust testing system, and that is one of the one of the ways we'll open up completely. That's one of our seven points that we that we make at the county is that, that we need to have testing in place. Um, uh, Councilor Mike Clark said again, I don't know if you saw it there, um, Pat, he said, tell me how the, to help the commissioners and I'd be glad to do it. So how can the, how can the city <clears throat> um, work together? Is there any way that the, the city council and the mayor can also be involved in that? And, um, uh, and, and if we could just get along and get a something that's a compromise, um, that would work for people because right now it's just, uh, it feels like it's, this is the answer or this is the answer. And there's gotta be something in the center that says the people who are really at risk here, do, we need to find ways to make sure that they are safe. But then other people who need to go back to work need to be allowed to, to live and go back to work. And I, I think we should be able to forge what is uh, essentially a winning situation for all, all all interested parties. Uh, Mike, uh, Councillor Clark, yes. In, in fact, I think if the city council were to come up with a resolution or a letter to the governor asking the health authority of Lane County to be able to uh, relax restrictions, then that would probably that would probably help. Would it be like a, a I, I love that idea. So if we got if people wanted to also go comment, uh, go on the city council site and send a letter to each of the city councilors and the mayor and encourage them to um, to how about if Lane County and Springfield and Eugene and Coburg and all of us could come up with a, a comprehensive plan of our own for reopening and keeping people safe um, at the same time. We come up with the plan so that we can go to the governor, but we need the commissioners because you're kind of like the top dogs in the area. Um, We're the health to, authority, yeah. Right, to, to, to forge that stream. But if everybody quit yeah. fighting and just came together and said, we have to deal with both these realities and how can we do that as a community? Um, that could be super cool. And we probably have a lot more power with our governor if she sees that we're working together. You know, uh, Brian Anderson just asked a question. Why can't uh, why companies with, who take sensible precautions open? Well, if you've shopped at Jerry's building materials, I drove by their parking lot today, jammed, absolutely full of people. Jerry's is a busy place. 
And I was in there a couple of times over the last week. And if you look at the precautions that they put in place at Jerry's, it is world class, as you would expect from Jerry's, of <clears> course. <throat> but um, uh, people are well spaced. They have different. Pe- they have uh, staff throughout the store, making sure, reminding people to remain well spaced. Their checkouts are spaced, and they have uh, they have shields in place in front of their cashiers. So I asked if they were busy when I was in there, and uh, and the response was we're as busy as we would expect to be um, because they are taking precautions and people feel safe. Uh, so if you look at the way they are doing it, they, the the types of precautions that are taken at a place like Jerry's can be repeated by just about any retail organization. Well, and, and what I'm so impressed with is that a lot of places, like uh, Trader Joe's, the same mm-hmm. thing, very compassionate, helping people through, you know, um, yeah. Winco, a lot of the grocery stores are really, Buy they've more. really learned. Yeah, they had to learn because we've never done this before. Jennifer says, I'm super high risk and I still support opening it up. Figure out a way to keep those at a high risk uh, to stay home longer. Um, well, we, we each have a personal responsibility to ourselves and our families, and we need to uh, adhere to our own personal responsibility. And as Jennifer says, if she, if you are high risk, then you have uh, more at stake if you do go out. See, this is another one. Jason, I, I understand what you're saying. Starting in a reopening process is going to be a big step and help people recover from the physical and the mental strain of this whole thing. People need an end date or a look at without you know what's going to be coming and and i understand it's a virus we can't plan around that but i think i've seen other states um in the, in the country giving people giving people more of a well a window like here's where this we're going to try to get this done by then and then we're going to try to get this done by then and that's one thing i'm not putting you in this box i'm putting me in this box that's one thing i have that i would love to talk with the governor about is like you can't leave business people out here hanging not knowing what's going to come we, 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 the very nature of a business is you plan. <laughs> I've got a month where I don't know what to do and how to do it. And that brings no income in. So I have to be able to plan it. Even if it's widespread, I need some kind of an answer. And I think that's where a lot of people are getting really frustrated, especially business people. And, and uh, you're exactly right. You know, if people do have a roadmap, so to speak, or a blueprint to look at, then you can check where you are against what you established as your roadmap. Have we made progress? And if we are beginning to make progress, then it allows us to make more progress as far as relaxing standards, relaxing uh, restrictions. Hey, Pat, um, are they releasing any inmates at the Lane County Jail due to COVID-19? I don't have the exact details on that. The last I heard from uh, the sheriff is that, no, we have not. Um, You know, the Lane County passed the public safety levy, which allowed us to open more beds in the Lane County Jail. And to my understanding, at this point, um, we are still... um, in the same protocol that we've been in for the last several years. We do release prisoners, um, sometimes ahead of schedule, but as of right now, I have not heard that COVID-19 has been a factor in those, those releases. Um, I don't think this is a question necessarily for you, Pat, Matt Kendall, um, friend of mine. How do we decide who's at risk and who needs to go back to work? I really wish it wasn't so gray. It, I, I know. Feels like yeah. if that cash flow pipeline was open faster, we could hold out longer. Otherwise, put some solid guidelines together for all businesses so that we could all duplicate that around the area. But, but see, I think it, isn't, isn't that the good thing we're doing here, Pat, is Bring the community in. That's what their commissioners are asking you to do tomorrow. That's what the city council needs to hear from us is what are our positive doable ideas, not just throwing things out to see if they stick, but come up with some great ideas that we could present as a plan. And importantly, once again, have a retreat plan. You know, I was a uh, infantry rifle company commander. And when you have a movement to contact, Sometimes when you're planning that you run into things you don't expect or you run into worst case scenarios. The first thing you do, the, your plan in a movement of contact is how do you get back in case you're overwhelmed? Well, that uh, really anything you do, you have to have an escape plan should it go against your expectation or beyond your expectations. So uh, it really is, um, you know, it's just a matter of making sure that we can retreat if we have to retreat and take steps as we can take steps while keeping people safe. Uh, Ann says, I'm so sad for my hairdresser and just opened a new business and my nail salon just doubled the size of their business, killing new local small business. I know of Northwest Burger just expanded. Boom. You know, um, Blue Valley Bistro uh, expanded to Coburg and in other locations. Boom. I'm just unfortunate timing, but oh my, it's so um, devastating to these families. They put everything into this, you know. Precise. And there are other businesses that are on the cusp of opening. 
we have one uh, one <coughs> uh, company that had built a facility here in Eugene, ready to open. They were waiting for the health inspection. Well, we're not doing health inspections right now. So they have everything in place with all the investment that they made ready to go, but there's no health inspection happening. So one of the steps that we could do potentially is start doing health inspections to allow new businesses to open or continue. And significantly, um, you know, hair salons in particular, we talked about this, how easy it would be for them to restrict to one customer at a time. It's still not business as usual, but it's a step in that direction. Lynn says, uh, he just said, we have a personal responsibility to protect ourselves. I agree. I don't expect you to protect me. You can't protect me. I protect me. I also am very high risk. Also, we are all adults. Why are we treated like children? Sure. And a response that I've heard on that, and I, I, I understand it. I don't wear a mask to protect me. I wear a mask to protect others from me. It's my exhalations, if, if I were infected, that would be causing the problem. It's very uh, unlikely that the mask would protect me from, unless it were an N95, would protect me from somebody else. So I'm protecting other, other people from me. So if we, if we are required to wear a mask in public, while we don't, perhaps sends as much risk to ourselves. It is risk to other people that is being cited. I think one other thing that should we could address, and this is not to you, you don't have to say anything about this, Pat. It's just, I just don't want to get you in trouble. But I also hear a lot of people saying that, um, you know, that, that, that folks are not, you know, people are too dumb to, to do the right thing. So we have to force this down their throat. And what I'm seeing is a lot of people trying to do the right thing. And maybe it's not the right thing that you think is the right thing, not you, I'm that person, but it is for them. They're going, this is what I've read. And this is what I think is the right thing. And I think people, we all need to stop doing that because it's really, and my mom used to always tell me, um, Ricky, that's not none of your business. So you go do what you're supposed to do and let them do what they're supposed to do and yeah. stop, you know, picking and going, well, we, of course the government has to step in because everybody's not doing the right thing. And I think we need to kind of knock that stuff off. And, um, you know, and, uh, and really uh, analyzing it as to what is, is the best situation. You know, Ken Patterson just now asked if why the July 6th date. My understanding is that it was extended 60 days. The original order was for 60 days and then it was extended for 60 days. So that's that's the reason for July 6th. Then uh, another Ken whose last name I didn't ask at uh, note asked about dental and medical offices. And I spoke specifically with my dentist about the hygienists. And uh, he is of the opinion that uh, there is very little aeros aerosol uh, danger uh, in, with the hygienist as long as they don't use certain kinds of equipment that, uh, that produces the aerosol. So uh, dental offices um, and other medical offices potentially could open up with the, with, um, with the right kind of uh, precautions. Lynn, I'm putting your, your comment wrong answer, but I don't know what that's in reference to, but I want to make sure that your thing comes up there just so uh, we didn't hide you or anything like that. Um, Pat, yeah, I want to be really super respectful. Um, <clears throat> he has a hard out at 530. And this guy's committed to his wife. And if you knew Debbie, you'd understand why. And I want to make sure that you get that hard out that 530 is your Debbie time. And I don't want to take any more of your Debbie time. But thank you for coming and doing this. But would you encourage people again to do the, the thing tomorrow? I, I would absolutely encourage people to look at the uh, look at the link that's placed on your I believe it's on your Facebook page. Is it Rick? Um, it will be. I will and, get it. I will get it on there. Yeah. And uh, and then um, fact, also you there it is right there. Me. Any email that comes to me, I'll forward to the rest of the board. And my, my email is uh, pat.far at lanecounty.gov. OK, and I will put that in as soon as we're okay. off here. And get that and, so people and I, and I will uh, I'll try to respond to every single email that comes in and every one of them will be forwarded to our administration who that will get it to all the commissioners all right if you're not able to be there in person if you can't speak in person please submit something in writing let's make sure that everybody is, is heard quite often we hear from a relatively small uh, cross-section of people this is an opportunity for everybody to get their words out all right and I'm gonna pull you off here because I'm gonna say one more thing but I don't want to necessarily have you have to be connected to me but that <laughs> okay Pat so okay. thank you all right, buddy. Thank, Thank you, you so much for doing that. Yeah. For so you guys, again, so Pat's encouraging us to get involved and do that. Um, and like he said, um, a lot of times it's the um, squeaky wheel that gets the, the, the gets heard. And in our community, we need to be squeakier. Um, you, you can complain on Facebook. You can complain on Instagram. You can complain online, but it doesn't do any good. Um, what we need to be doing is coming up with real answers, real solutions, real ideas and be very positive and email these people, all the city councilors in Eugene, Springfield, 
um, the county commissioners and tell them we want to create our own plan for reopening and we want to be a part of that. So it's back in your hands, um, in our hands. That's how it works. Um, okay. Again, we should thank Pat Farr, Commissioner, Lane County Commissioner Pat Farr for coming on tonight and doing that with us, uh, explaining a little better. The meeting is at nine o'clock this morning. I'll get his information up. Otherwise you can, uh, send emails and just write one email and just send it to all the different people. So it doesn't take a lot of time. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye guys. Share this on your page and let other people know. Okay, please. All right. See you later.